Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. In this video we're going to talk a little bit about how to breed these guys. It says bristle nose plecos, bushy nose plecos, uh, ancestrous, many names, same fish. Um, all different types of them, you get albino, calico, normal, brown, all different names but the same thing. Um, if you've been a follower of this channel and if you haven't, click that subscribe button and click that bell and make sure you don't miss any future videos, it really helps me out. Um, but you'll know I've had this tank set up for a while as a bristlenose pleco breeding tank. And what we need for that is obviously some bristlenose plecos, so you need males and females. Um, in here we've got a bunch of both. You need plenty of hiding spaces, so that's why we've got all these little... Um, these are actually, the caves in here are actually um, clay watering spikes, I think they're called. I'll put a link down in the description so you can see them. Um, Plenty of wood because they like to chew on wood. Plenty of food because you've got to get these fish up to their breeding condition where they're nice and fat and happy and they're ready to go. Uh, and then time. I mean, the, the water parameters are the same as you would keep them in. You don't need any special parameters just for the breeding. Um, in this tank, what I've gone for is a substrate that's half sand, half gravel because some like both. I've gone for um, a bit of plant cover along the top here that you can see as well just to keep the light down a little bit in, some, in one half of the tank. I've got some, like I say, some actual caves that I've bought, some of these clay watering spikes and just some flower pots as well that I've drilled. Um, but this tank has been set up like this for about six months or so now and the only thing that it's actually breeding is snails. We've had eggs a few times, um, I think we can cut to it now with this um, the lemon one here I think is sitting on eggs at the moment because he hasn't moved from there for a couple of days generally what happens is that the male will try to trap a female that's uh, got eggs into a cave get her to lay the, the eggs and then the male will actually sit on those eggs for a while and um, they'll sit on there for a good few days fanning the eggs making sure that they don't get mouldy and then you'll just notice an explosion of tons and tons of little babies so I think that's what's going on in here. But like I say, it's been running for a good six months now. Optimal conditions, zip, zilch, nothing. But if we go over here, this tank here, it was actually my rainbow fish tank where I was doing nothing to make the, the plecos happy. Um, I didn't even think I had a male and a female in here, but I obviously do because now I'm absolutely overrun with these tiny babies. Um, and as you can see, none of the things that you'd want in there, there's no wood. There was no caves, there's just a little pot there that had fallen over and the the pleco had made this into a cave for himself uh, and they just kind of got on with it, I wasn't even doing anything. This used to be a rainbow fish tank uh, and I think what happened was either the water got too cold, the heater failed or whether I overfilled with cold water it actually killed all the, the rainbow fish and at the same time that's when these little plecos appeared there's tons of them in here. The parents in here, they're both what I would call brown bristle nose plecos, but the parents are a mix of albino and brown, and um, so they're obviously carrying that gene. Um, yeah, I wanted to make a how-to video and it's just kind of, well, don't do anything, just let them get on with it. And it just shows the resilience of these fish. They're really quite hardy, they're brilliant algae eaters, especially when they're young, because that's what they feed on when they're young. I haven't done anything special for them, You'll notice here I've got a little bit of courgette in here, it's not cooked or anything, it's just literally got a fork stuck in it to weigh it down. Uh, and these guys will go to town on that. As well as if you can, I've got some algae wafers, but if you've got any algae in the tank, they will take care of that. They're brilliant algae cleaners uh, when they're young, the bristlenose plecos. So I keep these fish in pretty much all my tanks. I first got into them when I kept discus and I would use them because they can tolerate quite a high temperature and quite a low temperature. Um, they're not cold water fish by any means. They're really good at as a clean up crew if you like, um, especially in discus tanks. You find them a lot in that hobby and they, they just hoover up all the algae that's all over the place. Um, I've never found them to need anything specific. I've always tried to give them some wood, even though this is a tank that doesn't have any wood in it, because they do like a bit of that fibre stuff in their diet. Um, they like to hide away so if they've got somewhere to go that's great. But I had two in here, they were purely performing an algae cleanup duty and happened to get it on. And now I've got hundreds of the little buggers. And they're great on algae, they're great on un uneaten food. 
Um, they can be quite messy, so if you've got an aquascape tank and it's all about the pristineness of it, then maybe that's not the way to go on these ones, but there's a lot worse options out there. Um, yeah, and here they're just in with some red cherry shrimp at the moment. I'm doing really well. Red cherry shrimp, we've got some uh, amano shrimp in there as well. They're quite happy. There's no wood in there, so I'm going to go and get some wood and stick it in there to give them a little bit of something to munch on when they want to. And they should be happy. As always, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. It'd be great to see you here again next video, and we'll see you later. Bye!